first of all, I just want to say a word of encouragement to you guys, particularly who have been on the front lines of this for, for these last two weeks. Many of you have been live streaming for a long time, and yet this whole thing about lockdown, being thrown into a situation where there's only, you know, there's nobody in the congregation, there's nobody in the building, you've had to really scramble. And I know a lot of you have worked 12, 14 hour days for the last two weeks. I know you've had to really find new equipment, figure out how do we get connected better. And I just really just want to say thank you. I mean, you've done a brilliant job. I, the, the studies and the reports I've seen so far indicate that hundreds of thousands of people are watching, literally millions at this point, when you think about all the churches in the country. Also, thousands and thousands of people have been accepting Christ, which is a remarkable thing. And so this is a really positive thing. And even though some of us have had hiccups, there's been a number of churches that had some problems with technical stuff. But let me tell you something. You're all doing a remarkable, remarkable job. In fact, I'm going to start campaigning to pastors that your communication and media team are more important than you ever, ever thought. And particularly during a crisis like this, your communication team is your link to your congregation and potentially thousands and thousands of people beyond that. So just a word of encouragement. I think you guys are doing a great job and I for one appreciate exactly what you're doing. So let, let's start this little webinar with this thought. This is the context I wanna put everything in today. And that is, this is about adapting. Even though we're still live streaming, suddenly 100% of that congregation is now on the other side of that camera. And so we need to start thinking, and particularly now that we're going into the third week, Let's, let's forget the stage for a minute and start thinking how we adapt what happens in that sanctuary into a camera lens. And that means we need to question everything. We need to question where the band is placed, where musicians are placed, where the pastor's placed, the order that we do things in, because suddenly watching it online is a dramatically different experience than seeing it on the stage. We all know that. I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. However, we don't act it out. I've been watching probably 50 live streams over the last two weeks. And even sophisticated churches, who are some who are doing television programs, are not translating their worship service into the online experience well. So let's start just by changing everyone's thinking that it's all about adapting. There's no sacred cows here. Nothing as far as lighting and placement and things like that. And we'll all talk about those kind of things. So with that in mind, let me run through a list of quick things. Let me take about five or 10 minutes, then I'll pass it off to some other people. And then we'll do some Q&A. But let me start off with four or five things that I think are critically important. With that adaptability, that need to adapt in mind. Uh, and by the way, let me, say, let me say this. You know, for decades, people accept Grammy Awards in Hollywood. And over and over as they accept it, they say, you know what? I, I learned to sing in my church. I learned to sing in my church choir, my worship team. That's happened so often in the Grammys. We, we all know all about that. I'm believing that in future Oscar ceremonies, people are going to pick up an Oscar for a movie and say, you know what? I started because I was a video guy at my church. I started because I was on the communication team or media team at my church. So let me just tell you, what you're doing now is a basis for a career. You're really building up what you do. And I, I urge you to take it seriously and look at the future of what the potential is here, because this is so critically important right now. Okay, with the adaptable thing in mind, let me say this. Number one, don't fake it. Don't fake it. I'm still seeing a lot of churches where on this, the live stream, the pastor is walking over here and preaching to this group, walking over here and preaching to this group, walking over here. The problem is there is no group out there. Everybody knows your <laughs> church is empty. Although we're in various stages of lockdown around the country, we know those are empty sanctuaries. So don't fake it. 100% of your congregation is on the other side of the camera. The lens is where you need, need to be focused on. So make sure your pastor, if you're on the communications team, make sure your pastor understands that faking it is not working because people get there's nobody out there and it just looks odd. So encourage him to do that. And sometimes it takes practice speaking to a camera. Let me give you two thoughts. One is practice, just practice. Set up a, a phone or a mobile device. Let the pastor practice and get comfortable talking to a lens. The second thing is talk to one person. Make sure your pastor or you, if you're listening as a pastor, understand that that person on the other side of the camera isn't thinking about himself or herself in a group of 100 or 5,000 people. They're thinking of themselves. So even if they're in a family group, they're all individually absorbing this. So talk like you're talking to one person. This might be the time to shrink things down a little bit. Not so much ranting, not so much really great preaching. Focus, 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 and talk to one person. I know Oral Roberts, back in the old glory days of Christian TV, was a master at understanding that you're communicating with one person on there. So make sure they understand that. Another thing I'd say is 
the pre-service video. Let me just give you a couple thoughts. I know tons of you are doing it. I've suggested this for a long time. We know uh, that a significant number of people are tuning in 15, 20, even 30 minutes before a live stream starts. The problem is we want to take that as an opportunity to encourage people to watch the service. And the reason I say it is because you know that so much research indicates now that people decide within four to eight seconds whether they want to engage with you, whether they want to try a new product, whether they want to try a new experience. We're being so bombarded with media messages, some say up to 10,000 messages a day, that we've just changed our behavior. So we decide what we think about something in the first four to eight seconds, which means suddenly your pre-service video could be the thing that causes people to either stay and watch your service or drives them away. I saw a number of pre-service videos where people just kind of took a silly viewpoint of it and they put a couple teenagers in charge from their youth, the youth department and they were just cracking jokes and having fun and being silly. Well, maybe normally that's okay, but right now people are concerned. People are worried. People are fearful. Let's take that pre-service time seriously and, and lead that lead those people into a worship experience. So get somebody to do your pre-service video uh, that is really a spiritual leader in your church. Uh, you can have some fun with it, but, but understand what people are tuning in for and why. And now understand that that pre-service video is a big factor in whether they stay to watch the whole live experience. So let's take that seriously. Another few things I would suggest when the worship service does start on the live stream, have the pastor open it. A lot of you did that. Many of you didn't do that, but you know what? I just want that reassurance that this is my pastor. He's in charge. He's going to be here today. And I just encourage you, whether he does an opening prayer or just a welcome, before you go into praise and worship, before you go into music, get the pastor up there up front, just giving people a welcome. Um, when it, <laughs> Let me just say this about music, by the way. A couple, couple thoughts are interesting. Social distancing. We've had a number of people write in with emails certainly about the crew, you know, how can I shoot this live stream if I only can have a handful of people and we have to stand 10 feet apart? Every state is a little different right now, but you just kind of have to go by your guidelines and figuring it out. I think that's the miracle of video. I've shot all over the world with a two-man crew, so it's not impossible to capture the service or pre-tape a service with a very small crew. What I'm more concerned about is social distancing with the people on stage. I watched a number of choirs on this past weekend that had 30, 40 choir members, but they're all standing 10 feet apart. Now just think about that for a minute. That just looks odd. It looks strange. They filled the choir loft, they filled the stage, they filled down to the first couple rows of pews because they had to be so far apart. So what I'm saying is this, maybe now is the time to shrink the music team. Maybe you need to just get a, a worship team of three to four people. Maybe this is time for a great soloist. Um, we're also seeing, by the way, with music, that your most transient audience is happening during the music, during the praise and worship, during the choir numbers, during the hymns, whatever you do. And people are locking into the live stream more during the message, which tells me that people are really tuning in to hear the message. Doesn't mean that there's not a place for worship music and choir music and whatever you do. However, we're losing a lot of viewers during that time. So my suggestion is I would condense the music portion of the ministry. Uh, on uh, the live streams last week, I saw a lot of 45 minute music sessions before the pastor ever got up. I would really consider, even with Easter coming, shrinking that down to about 15 minutes, maybe two, maybe three songs. People seem, and we, you know what? Those of us who have been involved in Christian television, whether you know in our work with Lakewood, Joyce Meyer, Hillsong, other people, we've known for a long time that people tune in primarily to watch the pastor's message. Now that's a Christian television program. However, we, this is a live stream and this is a worship service, so we do want to give them a glimpse of what everything is like. However, just remember that um, I would condense music a little bit, try to get to the pastor a little sooner. I think that'll make a dramatic, dramatic dis, uh, dif, uh, difference. Now, let me say one thing before I pass it off, and maybe we'll start with Dan talking about camera placement. But one last thing is, let me just say this about pastor's wardrobe. Now, I'm a, I'm totally a casual guy. I get it. If you wear jeans and a t-shirt, that's perfectly fine with me. If you wear a suit and tie, that's fine with me. Joel Osteen wears a suit and tie and he got one, 4.1 million live stream viewers last week. So that's not going to keep people away. However, if you are casual, really, you know what? You know your audience better than me. You know your congregation better than me. You know your personal style better than me. However, I saw a number of pastors this past week that were so casual 
it looked like a couple had were wearing a t-shirt that had been balled up in the bottom of a drawer for six months, wrinkled logos on it. Um, I get the casual thing, but let me tell you, this is a time when people are nervous. They're concerned. If I'm thinking about supporting you financially, do you look like a guy with credibility that I can trust with my hard earned money that's quickly disappearing? So I'm not trying to put fear in your heart and say you need to wear a coat and tie, not at all. Wear a t-shirt if you want to, just look credible. This is a moment, remember, if they're deciding what they think in four to eight seconds, they're gonna decide, decide based on your look before they, hear a chance, they have a chance to hear you preach. So I just wanna say, wear the t-shirt if you feel comfortable doing it, make it look good. Wear torn jeans if you want to, make it look good. Be a style that people will connect with and relate to and understand that you have credibility. And if I wanna give to this effort in this church, I, I really believe in this guy, I trust this guy. Just think about your wardrobe from that sense. So we're getting some questions in, but let me go to Dan. Dan, talk a little bit about camera placement. We're needing to change some things about that. Jump in there. First of all, I wanna say thank you to every media director and support staff. I know it's not easy when your weekly service plans get thrown out the window suddenly and you're now adapting to a new way of life online. But let me tell you, you're doing a great job. Every week, myself and the entire Cook Media Group team have been watching countless churches online and we're proud of what you're doing. I've worked with and in churches my entire life, and this is our time as media departments to really shine. Uh, let's walk through a few issues in regards to how we adapt capturing our weekend services. And let's start with camera placement. Some of us have large sanctuaries. You may be seating 10,000, 5,000 plus people, while some of you may have small spaces, a few hundred or less. And before it was common practice to let the viewer at home see, see the size of our room through wide shots, reverse shots, but now everything's changed. You may even need to move some of the positions of your cameras to make sure that we're only seeing what's happening on the stage. If you have a jib in the back of the room, pull it up close to the stage. We don't need to see those big sweeping wide shots right now. We can pull them back as soon as we get. But if you, even if you've got a dolly, move it up close to the stage. You may even want to push your center line closer. If you've got one camera, don't be afraid to take it out of the sound booth if it's way in the back and get it closer to the stage. It not only helps your camera operator get a better, better shot, it's more steady, but it also helps the pastor visually see the camera better since that's now his audience. That's who he's talking to. And remember, whatever we do, we do not want to show wide shots of an empty room. Let's hold off from doing that. Also, I would encourage you to talk with your camera operators and your volunteers and make sure they understand the why behind these changes. When they understand it's not about trying to get that cool shot, but it's about capturing your pastor in a way that connects with him and viewers. More than ever before, their skill set is important. Uh, that shaky shot, that out of focus shot is really going to shine more than ever. So we want to make sure everyone is on par, everything's framed properly. We don't want to give the viewer a reason to stop watching. Just keep in mind your audience compares everything they do with what they see on network TV. So we've got to bring our best. The next thing that's crucially important is to keep in mind how the viewer is watching your service. Most likely, very few are watching on their large screens at home. Some of them might be, but probably the majority on their desktop, their laptop, iPad, or even their phone. And these are not large devices. So it's even more important that we compose our shot of our pastor tight, not on a medium or wide shot. Because as Phil always teaches us, there is power in a tight shot. When, we, when we've cropped our pastor at the waist, we've got his head shot in there. It connects and shows emotion to the viewers. If you need to cut to a medium shot now, then that's fine. But keep, keep in on that close-up shot. I know many of you have multi-site campuses, which means you've probably been sending a medium or head-to-toe shot to your live stream. Since your multi-site is probably not meeting right now, let's tighten up all those shots. Don't worry about those. You need to make certain your pastor is connecting visually through the smallest device which is most likely going to be your phone. Keep that in mind. Real quickly on lighting. This is crucial during worship. You may have programmed some super cool lighting moves when we had church as normal, but now you need to reassess everything. Uh, this past Sunday, I was watching the church, and lights were going everywhere but on the worship leader's face. The entire song, his face was dark. So double-check your program settings. It may have worked in, in your auditorium before, but it probably may not be working now, so check that out. Audio. 
For those of you that are broadcasting from your sanctuary already, you probably have a good workflow already, so this may not apply to you. But if you're using your camera, your uh, computer to live stream from your home to your audience, consider using earbuds. I'm using uh, AirPods, which help. Uh, there's also some cheap, inexpensive things online you could buy. Rode, R-O-D-E, make some great lobs and uh, handheld mics that you can plug directly into your device and it's gonna sound much better. In fact, Phil uses those quite a bit on his podcast. Lastly, some of you may be pre-taping your weekend services and running it as a, a simulated live event. This is okay. However, I would encourage you not to make it so slick that it doesn't seem real. It's okay to fix bad shots and add graphics, but make certain it feels real and authentic. It can actually be a positive thing if there's a few bumpy shots and things in there. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want people to get a sense that it's live. Bill? And, and let me just, to support what Dan is saying, this is not really the time to be uber creative. Um, I, I saw a number of wide streams that were just so, you know, so stylish and so creative, but they just didn't connect with the viewer. This is more about connecting. What can we do? to make that person at home have a legitimate spiritual experience here through our live stream. So, you know, I love creativity. I'm the creativity guy. I love it. However, let's make sure we're doing it in the service of the, the task of, of connecting with our viewers. Let me say that. And even Easter, when we talk about Easter, maybe we need to tone Easter down. Maybe this is not the time for an extravagant set or a huge production. One of the things I would say is that I saw a couple that had been done churches that were used to doing really high quality video. They had local television programs they produced and they produced a pre-service, a pre-tape service that was so good. It just didn't feel right. You know, I think a, a, a live stream needs to be a little rough around the edges because this is a, you want this feeling that this is live worship happening right now. So uh, that's just some of the things to think about along that line. Uh, Don Baldwin, uh, Don Nicole Baldwin, our uh, lead strategist, how do we keep our community engaged? You know, it's, Online is just step one. It's really not the whole thing. We've, we're just at the starting point. How do we continue to keep people engaged during this time? This is such a great question because this is really our opportunity to truly be the church. I mean, people right now, they're lonely, they're scared, they're in need of help. And so Bible studies, they're, they're good, but they may not be the first thing that comes to mind. Um, especially if they're far from God or if they're newer in their faith walk. And so I, I actually had asked a bunch of churches, what are some of the things that they're doing creatively to connect with people? And I got some great examples. And so rather than us just coming up with like ideas, I wanted to share what some churches are actually doing right now in case that inspires you guys too. And so one church was sharing how they are actually collecting notes and cards for grocery and pharmacy workers to kind of remind them that what they do matters, that all of their hard work is seen. Um, these are folks who are just slaving, much like you guys are right now. Um, they're also giving them small bottles of hand lotion. Many of them had said they're washing their hands constantly, and so their hands are getting really dry. And so simple little things like that matter. Another church had set up a Google Docs form and it was distributed by the congregation through their local Facebook and next door groups. You know, those next door apps and things like that. They, the members of the congregation are sharing this online form where they can have people volunteer to do grocery runs, people who need things picked up, they can ask for help. They're walking dogs, they're tutoring kids at home, like all these parents are supposed to be homeschooling their kids and doing their jobs at the same time. And so it's, it's hard to do. So we've got a lot of uneducated kids at home. And so folks are offering to help tutor their kids. Um, your congregation wants to feel like they're doing something that they're making a difference. And so providing opportunities for them to be hands-on in a hands-off sort of a way um, is helpful. Uh, just a couple quick other ones. Um, another church is actually providing meals from local restaurants to healthcare workers at local hospitals. Think about your ER folks. These folks are overwhelmed with trying to care for people. They don't usually have time to go to the bathroom, let alone get something to eat. And so having meals that are delivered to support these guys is uh, just an easy way to not only support your local restaurants, but also to care for your community. And one more um, is that they've got uh, just thinking about something as simple as phone calls. 
there was a, a large church that a friend of mine is leading communications and she had shared that their campus teams are calling everyone that they have a phone number for. And, and people are actually answering. They're not letting it go to voicemail and calls are typically 20 minutes long. They're checking in with them. They're saying, Hey, how can we serve you? How can we help? How can we pray for you? But um, in addition to praying, how can we tangibly do something to help you? And so just thinking about how can we be the church in addition to talking about what Jesus is asking us to do and teaching them how to grow in their faith, how can we be the hands and feet right now is, a, is an important thing to do. Another thing is, as Phil had said earlier, is to really rethink the role of your communications team. Um, they're a strategic channel for delivering the vision of your church right now, not just a, a service to support the ministries. And so people may not remember the sermons that you deliver this month, but they're going to remember how you respond to your communities. And your communications team is a, a great channel for helping to connect people to the vision of your church. And for the leaders who are listening, I'm sure many of you are doing this already, but just in case you haven't yet, you, you let your team know how valued they are. Um, people, are, your people are exhausted. They really are. Um, I've heard so many say that they've never dreamed that canceling church would uh, require so much work, right? And so many of them are doing their best to learn on the fly. So try to be gracious. Remind them that the work that they're doing really matters. And we're all kind of in this together. That's what I've got, Phil. Let me let me answer a couple of questions before we go to Laura. I have some Laura has some important things to do, but but let me some things that have come in, particularly based on what uh, Dawn was saying. Um, we're getting a lot of questions live or pre-tape. Should we do it live or should we pre-tape? Um, I have seen no evidence whatsoever that indicates one is better than the other. In other words, if you want to go live, great. But if you're concerned about technical problems, glitches, Wi-Fi issues, go pre-taped. Go come in on a Thursday or a Friday, shoot the service, edit it, and roll it in. However, there's a lot of pastors that have called me. They say, I kind of like the rush, you know, being on the edge of being live, live. So if you feel more comfortable doing that, and, and generally speaking, if you're a small church and you're just doing this with a mobile device or a one camera, then maybe live is the way to go because if you don't have the capability of editing, but Trust me, the people out there generally do not know. So I, I don't think there's any better or worse pro or con. You do what you feel is comfortable for you. Uh, someone else asked a question about length of the service. I would tilt toward making this a little shorter experience. You know, when it comes to your message, maybe we start thinking about 20 minute message. Maybe we start thinking about 15 minute music or worship. The reason being, when you're in church, when I, when I'm, when I go to my church here in Los Angeles, I'm, I'm in a row with 12 people on either side of me and getting out is a big deal. And I'm not about to get up and leave. At home, I got a million reasons to get up and leave. I can go to the refrigerator. I can decide to get dressed. I can pick up a magazine. There's a lot of reasons to leave at home. So let's get it short to the point. If the minute the viewer feels we're dragging it out, I think they're gonna, they're gonna bail. So just think in terms of getting it short and pastors, I would say with your message, this is not the time to you know, share deep theological insights. This is time, this is the time to offer hope. I, I, I was jokingly said the other day, this is the time to be Joel Osteen. You know, something short, something hopeful. Uh, people are concerned, they're scared. Give them teach about what the Bible says about God getting us through this. What does the Bible say about hope? What does the Bible say about what we should be thinking about right now? Um, also, the way we respond, keep in mind, uh, is the way the community is going to look at us and see, like, like Dawn said, they're not going to remember your sermon so much, but they'll remember how we responded and how we're connecting with them. Last couple things, uh, Kim Dortilly at Bel Air in LA asked about the interactive issues. How do you do about, what do you do about communion and those kind of things? Um, there's no question you could do it. Just do it. Let people know ahead of time. Encourage them to go get the juice, get the crackers, whatever, and and let, have some fun with that. I would just say if it's if they want saltines, if they want Ritz crackers, you know, this is not the time to get judgmental about these things. I, I think it is a, a very good time to bring people together for issues like communion and other things. Just give them enough time ahead to start to reach out and get the, the things they need to make that happen. Baptisms, we probably need to put on hold for a while, things that involve actual getting together. But if it can be interactively done through a camera, I'd encourage you to do it. Um, couple questions about 
donations. Uh, how do we keep our giving up? And some people ask about issues like uh, Cash App, Venmo. Um, he, here's, here's my feeling about that. First of all, when it comes to motivating people to continue giving, I'm not embarrassed to do it. I mean, certainly people are hurting right now. P people are struggling right now. A lot of people are getting laid off and we don't wanna just be overt and asking for money. However, this is the time to allow people to partner in the vision you have for your church. For instance, there are churches out there, like Don said, doing remarkable things to minister to people. And I think in that world, uh, give you a great example, in uh, our partner company, Grace Hill Media, Jonathan Bach and Ted Gartner over at Grace Hill, they, they partnered with us to help get churches in LA together. And, and it's interesting, while people aren't meeting, guess what? Their toilet paper's piling up. Their cleaning supplies are piling up. They have supplies that they're not using right now. So we've, we're bringing big churches, Mosaic, Shepherd Church, a lot of other, Oasis Church, a lot of other great churches here in LA, we're bringing them together to donate, donate those supplies to the Salvation Army, who's needing them and using them right, right now, ministering to people uh, that they minister to. So that, that's, that's a vision I would share with my live stream audience. We're getting together to help the Salvation Army minister to people, we're donating, we're, our people are going out and doing things. When you do that, when you, get, when you show the live stream and tell the live stream, that you're doing something, you're out here doing something, they're far more likely to want to support what you're doing. So if you're not doing anything during this time, ah, you're going to struggle. I think this is the time for us to act and we can still do it among, with the rules and the social distancing and all those things. We can, we can act. Matthew Barnett at Angelus Temple in the Dream Center, they have a drive-through food service where you just drive up, they bring a bag full, of, a grocery bag full of food out, and hand it to you through the car. And, um, what a great thing. And by the way, this toilet paper idea that we're doing with local churches, I just got right before we went online, KNBC, the NBC TV station here in LA, wants to do a story about it. They're excited about it. So talk about publicity for local churches and the impact they're making. So just when it comes to donations, think about those things. Now, let me just say, I did hear from my friends over at Lifeway. And if you go to the website, lifewaygenerosity.com forward slash coronavirus, lifewaygenerosity.com forward slash coronavirus, write it down. They're offering their giving platform absolutely free. It's a multifaceted, really robust giving platform to help people give online during live services and during live streams that will really help you. So if you don't have a way, if you don't have a good method for taking donations during this period or ever when you're live streaming, this might be an option, lifewaygenerosity.com slash coronavirus, it's absolutely free. And they're there to help you download it, get it on your system and help use that. So um, let me talk about some. Oh, by the way, Wendy Smith, <laughs> Wendy Smith, I want to answer this. Wendy said, so in a live stream, when the pastor prays, should he close his eyes? Um, you know, we're encountering a whole new world, folks. And um, I've always advocated that when it's a Christian television program, don't close your eyes. It just looks odd. You know, look at the camera, look at the viewer, pray as if you're connecting with people. So this is something you want to get comfortable with. And there's no, again, it, there's no great rules either way. And by the way, overall, I'm getting pummeled with questions about, you know, are my live stream viewers, are, there, are the numbers right? How many should we be getting? What should we be doing about this? The truth is there's no comparison. There is no, there's no benchmarks here. We are in uncharted charted territory. We are pioneers, folks. We are all in this together. And um, so there's really no comparison, no, no benchmark. So when it comes to interactive things like communion, when it comes to, does your pastor open his eyes when he prays, experiment with it. See how he feels. See how the, you know, the, the men, the women that are hosting your program feel and just try some different things and just don't worry about it so much. This is a real experimental time and we want to try. So Laura had some interesting things that she wanted to share. Laura, jump in there. I think, I think one of the things that we're learning is this is not church as usual. And while everything is new and different for us and for our media teams, it's also new and different for the viewers at home. And so I love what Phil has said about making sure every decision you screen through that grid of does this spiritually enhance that viewer's connection or does it distract? So as you make your decisions, you know, just think of that question. Does this make the connection stronger and help the people really connect to, to you and to God and to what God wants to do in their lives during this special time. Also, remember the newness that they're experiencing sitting at home in their living rooms watching church. 
So take the time ahead of service to prepare the slides that are going to help walk them through the new things. You know, how do I give? How do I connect with my pastor during this time? How do I get prayer? Make those slides ahead of time so it's just very clear and simple and direct and how people can follow up and stay connected to the church through the week. And that would include if your church does anything like some of these great outreach ideas that Don has shared, put those on a slide, make it easy for people to connect um, with what the church is doing right now. And I would add also, when you close out your service, um, don't just go to a black screen. End that service with a nice slide that, again, directs people to help through the week. So they're not just, oh, we're done. But they've been encouraged and motivated to follow through and do things through the week. Um, the other thing I really want to encourage pastors, especially with, is casting the vision to your, your staff as well as your volunteers. Because this is a time that we, you know, as, as it said, you know, some of you are working harder than you ever have before in your life to keep your congregations together to keep them uplifted and to reach beyond them to your communities. So I like to think of um, when Jesus spoke to the disciples in, in the book of John in chapter four, and he said, lift up your eyes. The harvest is ripe. You know, now is the time for the harvest. Now is the time for the gathering in to happen. And because you are now completely online, you are now reaching a global audience. And so you're going to be experiencing exactly what Jesus told the disciples. You are going to start reaping where others have sown. Others have been reaching out to their coworkers, maybe in Uganda or in, in England or Ireland or wherever. Others have been reaching out to their coworkers for years and now all of a sudden we've hit this crisis and people are looking for help and they go online and they find your service. So you're going to start reaping people. So be prepared for it and cast that vision to your people. Um, along with that vision is the fact that you know, the stage has been set for this time and for the church to shine. Just like in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost all people, well, people from every nation was there in Jerusalem on that day. And it is not coincidence that right now our internet can, um, possibilities, our online possibilities are greater than they ever have been before. Even go back two, two or three years ago and they weren't what we have now. And so technology is in your hand and it opens up a whole new audience to you. And so now is the time to make the most of every, tech, every technical way, every online way to reach people with that message of hope and life. And if you can cast that vision to your people and encourage them, we're working hard, we're working hard, but this is the time, this is the time to gather, this is the time to make the most of what God has put in our hands, then they will get on board. Yes, they're tired. Yes, they're trying to take care of their families. They're trying to find toilet paper, but everybody wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves right now. And you can pull them in and give their, them things to do and this would go beyond those community outreach things through the week. While you're online, while your church is online for a service, you can be feeding out to Facebook Live, to YouTube Live, and you can be reaching a whole other audience through those avenues than you ever have before. And so I want to encourage you to think bigger. Think bigger, get your people on board with you, get your volunteers on board. For example, during a service, hopefully you've got a chat in place and you're encouraging people to chat and to reach out during a service. And you should have volunteers ready to respond to those chats. But you can also have people monitoring your Facebook feed, monitoring your YouTube feed. They can do that from their homes. And they can be there chatting and engaging and praying with people. 
and just making the most of these online opportunities that really God has put into your hands for, for now. Um, and let me, let me say a couple of things responding to that and a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, you, you mentioned global audience. Research does indicate that the minute you go live, you're going to have a certain, a significant number of global people. Now you're going to grow your live stream. It'll start with, you know, your church and your local people, but it won't be long. I'll tell you before you start becoming a global organization, that's simply the, the, the numerical statistics are that uh, I, more people are watching internationally than you possibly think. So keep that in mind. In fact, today we have, a, we have people from India, we have people from the UK, we have people from other countries that have signed in. And some of them are asking questions about, the LifeWay giving platform, does it work in the UK? I honestly don't know, but it would be good to respond to them and find out if it does. One, um, we've got one question from India that they're on ver they're on real lockdown. I mean, they can't even leave their house right now. And so what can you do? And I just think that in those times, you can't do a service, but you can just be out there online ministering to people. You can do it individually. You could do it if you've got a phone and everybody in India has a phone, trust me, and they're very good with them and they have great Wi-Fi. So I would encourage you, do what you can in the circumstances you are in. Terry Christ asked a second ago about quality. If we are going to further lockdown, are we okay giving up, you know, more, a higher production quality for lesser? And I think, yes, you know, the quality issue is this. People, you want people to feel this is real, this is authentic. And so don't worry about making, making it perfect. As I said before, some people I think are making their live stream a little too perfect. So if you're at home and, and you, you don't have to do it from the stage of your church, you could do it from your living room, you could do it from another building in the church, make this a more intimate personal experience and don't worry so much about quality. Research also indicates that people remember three times as much from your message when you use graphics. So sermon points, scriptures, key ideas, put graphics on the screen if you possibly have that capability because not many people sit there with their open Bible. And the church, the great thing about certain platforms like church online platform, they have a version Bible to access there, but more graphics, the better. I think that's really, really critical. Um, on demand, when the live stream is over, don't just go to black, play it again. I think Life Church in Oklahoma City, replay, Bobby Grunewald told me they replay their live stream up to 80 times the following week. And keep in mind, while their service time play, their, the, 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 the original time they play it gets the biggest audience, cumulatively over all those 80 times, they have a far bigger audience. So make it easy to find, make it available 24 seven, make it on demand. We're gonna make this video on uh, available after we're done too, because just we know that people with different, different time zones in different places, they need to get this kind of information. Um, and, and my last thing, and then I wanna have Don and, and Dan and Lauren, everybody jump in and answer some questions. Um, the last thing is, what do you do from Sunday to Sunday? And this is a real pastor message. And that is whip out your phone, do some live Facebook, Instagram, do some live videos, talk to people, share pe with people, give them an update, let them know what's happening in the church, what's on your heart, what's God, what, how God's dealing with you during this time. We want to keep people connected through the week. And um, Don, I think Don and Laura both mentioned phone calls. Let me tell you, 60% of rural America has Wi-Fi. That means almost half of rural America doesn't even have Wi-Fi. So the importance of keeping connected. Ricky Temple, my, uh, a pastor in Savannah, wonderful friend, told me he wants to call all 3,000 members. 3,000 members, but he realizes the importance, and that's in Savannah. And he realizes the importance of that personal connection during the week. So get your team making calls, get your leaders making calls that the old, you know, the old fashioned, sometimes analog technology is sometimes best. So give them a buzz. Um, Dawn, Dan, Laura, you see any questions you want to respond to in particular? Dan, uh, yes. we actually have a question about lockdown. So many people are moving toward being at home now. Do you have any recommendations for them uh, for setting up a live stream from home or technically lighting wise or camcorder wise? Same principles apply. Uh, find an area in your home, if it's in your living room that looks good, pull out your laptop, open up, you know, in Mac, I think it's photo booth where you can actually see a little video preview of what it looks like. Set the laptop or computer down, find a background that, that looks nice, that's eye level preferably, uh, that's not busy, make sure your house is cleaned up. 
and uh, frame a nice shot like we have here. I'm on my laptop. So I've done the same thing. I've had to raise my laptop to eye level so that I'm not talking down or looking up. But find an area that looks good. Um, you can use the uh, audio that's on your computer or device, or you can buy some some AirPods or headphones that you have and use that. So same principles apply. It's just simple, uh, clean, and uh, that's what matters. A lot of folks are really concerned about if it's okay to leave their house, um, even though they're supposed to be on a lockdown, and, and will that send the wrong message. I think the bigger thing is to try to think about what do people really need to hear. And so it's less about what time do we have the service. It's less about if it's fancy in in production or if it's more low key. Think about what do they need to hear and how can you minister to them? Um, Think about it as more of a one-on-one level. And so technology is kind of the, the technical aspects of it is going out the window a little bit. People's expectations are lower. They're looking for authenticity over packaging and slickness. And so try to think about what do people need? How can we minister to them within the constraints that we currently have? And that's okay. And so that's like the big thing. Others were asking, how do we um, find new people or connect them to the church? And so um, having something on your website where there's a form that they can fill out, just like, are you new? And then following up with them, like Phil had mentioned, with phone calls or with emails, letting them know that they're seen, that they're visible, and that we want to minister to them in some way matters. And that helps too. And so it's just kind of shifting our mindset a little bit to still connect with people. We've got these amazing tools at our disposal. People are looking for connection more than ever. We don't have to do that face-to-face necessarily for them to feel seen and valued. Just like Don said, it's so important to connect to your website. Uh, If you are live streaming on YouTube, you can set up a premiere so that people can join at a specific time and they actually get push reminders if they're subscribed to your YouTube channel. And I know some people were concerned about Um, being able to interact. And so you can actually type in there and do similar to a Zoom call. You can also do it on Facebook. There's a lot of options to make comments or interact with people in that way. And if you do pre-record your service, I encourage you to consider doing that. And just on a little bit more technical perspective, make sure that all of your info for each uh, video does have those links that you need. It's very easy to forget to include those sometimes. Uh, You can also include link outs within the video if you want to get a little bit more technical. But I think people are very understanding right now about the transition that we're going through. So we're all just trying our best, but it's mostly about making the connections with other people. Mm -hmm. Phil, we had an interesting question about where we think and how this is going to shape the future given um, this experience. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think this is good. I, I think we need to think of now is the time to start thinking about a couple things. One is how we emerge from this and how that's going to shape the church in the future. Um, and I think right now, honestly, we should start. Th- this is the time to think about how we bring everybody back and how we start emerging from this. And so don't just get so caught up in the immediate moment that this is that this is you're a communication. If you're a communication director, if you're a media director, if you're on the team, you're, if you're the pastor, now is the time to rise up. And this is, like I said earlier, this is not just about equipment. This is not about what camera we're using. This is about how we connect to people. So start now thinking about how we're going to pull people back together, how we're going to emerge from this, and how we're going to move on. There's no question this is going to change the shape of the church. And the great thing about this moment for me is, if there is anything great, but the great thing is um, it's made so many more pastors realize that that online audience is a legitimate congregation. The church online pro, uh, uh, platform called me the other day and said just last week over a five day period, more than 10,000 copies of the church online app were downloaded for churches to use for live streaming. So suddenly pastors who have been hesitant to change, hesitant to go online, and some who have even been critical of going online are suddenly realizing that's a legitimate congregation. Now, before coronavirus, I I know three congregations, three churches that had done such a masterful job of embracing their live stream audience that that live stream audience was giving as much as a third of that church's total income. Why? Because they weren't just being treated as a second class citizen, they were being braced, embraced. They were welcomed every Sunday morning. They were treated like they were a campus of the church, and they felt like a certain obligation, and they want to be there. And keep in mind, 
these are just, you know, we always say we want more people in the pews and I'm all for that. I'm a big fellowship community guy. However, don't forget the number of people traveling in your church on business, the number of college students away at school. My wife and I travel an enormous amount and every Sunday we pop up on our laptop wherever we are in the world and we watch our home church in Bel Air's live stream. So it, there's a there's so many positive reasons. And I think in many ways, the virus is forcing a lot of pastors on board. So start thinking about how this is going to change. And we want to grow like, even after this. I would love to see us continue this conversation and keep growing this because this is the future. If you look at the life of Christ, Jesus always spent his time where the people were. In those days, it was the marketplace. It was the Temple Square. It was social gatherings like weddings. That's where Jesus always showed up. Well, guess what? Today, this is where the people are, folks. This is where the people are. They're online. So just like we want to encourage people to gather physically, which is, I think, still a priority, but we cannot neglect the fact that it's just our culture that people want to gather here. And we need to be there. The companies that will be the most successful in the future will have that. Also on my blog at philcook.com, by the way, I wrote a blog post this week about how to lead remote workers. And suddenly that's now becoming an issue as a pastor, as a church leader. How do you lead your team in the area when everybody's at home? I'd encourage you to go to philcook.com. Cook with an E, by the way. Go to philcook.com. Check out that post because it'll give you some ideas about how to lead the team more effectively. Any last questions that have come in, Victoria, Dawn, uh, Laura, Dan, anybody? Um, one thing that I keep seeing that's coming up over and over again is people are asking about different live streaming services. And so they have some questions there. And so uh, Gordon Barbosa actually had recommended that Outreach is offering, Outreach.com is offering a streaming service that connects you to your Facebook or your YouTube channel. It's got Bible, the Life Church that Phil had mentioned has another one that's doing it. Live stream is another option. Um, I'm seeing small churches even using Zoom as another option. And so there are tools. It doesn't have to be super expensive, but there are a lot of options. It's just a matter of kind of researching what's out there seeing what's uh, free, what you can actually afford, and what's going to work best for your church. The one last thing that I kind of think is is a question that's out there but not explicitly stated is um, a lot of states and countries are moving toward lockdown and aren't there yet. How can churches best prepare as they are waiting kind of for that potential order coming from um, the state or their country? Any recommendations for setting themselves up for success? Let me throw this out there, then I'll throw it to Dan. Let him respond to it. I, I, one of the things, it's your job, if you're a communication director or a media person or on the team, it's your job to know what the rules are in your area. Uh, your job is to stay in touch. This is, uh, I keep saying, this is our moment to rise up. Well, part of that is you are an idea source for the pastor and the ministry leadership. You are the people that need to be knowing how far we can go, how many people we can get together at once. So the it was a, an earlier question about, how, you know, we have to be careful and we're exactly right. We want to be an example to the world of, of doing the right thing at this critical time. So don't do stupid things. Don't take a chance, you know, be very sensitive, be very careful to what the rules are in your community, your area. Um, I think that's going to be critical and doing this thing right. Dan, what would you say? Look at churches that are on lockdown and see what they're doing. That'd be churches on the West Coast, uh, New York area. Uh, some interesting things that I've seen churches do is move, uh, you know, small, small groups are now online in Zoom, Zoom rooms like this, prayer groups, even support and recovery groups that the churches were holding, Celebrate Recovery, they're meeting on Zoom calls like this. Keep those things going, even down to new member orientation and first step for new believers. There's no reason that we can't modify and use online for those things so that we're still um, Engaging people that are new to the church, that are just receiving Christ for the first time. Let's really grab this technology and use it. And uh, look at what other people are doing. You'll get some great ideas. That's so. true. You know what? I do strongly recommend find a church you respect and admire in your area. Talk to them about what they're doing and how they're doing it and get some ideas and some real advice from them. Let's go around, around the, the, the team one more time. One last thing you'd say to people out there, if there's one thing you could leave people with. Laura, start with you. What would it be? I, the main thing I'm just going to say is for some of you that are really, really new to live streaming, um, Phil put together a really great special report and you can download that for free over at cookmediagroup.com forward slash streaming. So if you're brand new to this and you just want, I think it's like a 
11 or 12 steps to help you get online fast. So that's available there. And, and just, you know, we're cheering on all of you church people, the pastors, media teams, we are cheering you on and praying you through this time. I'm going to reiterate that your teams, your media teams, your communication teams are, are exhausted. And so remind them that what they do matters. For those who are on those teams, what you do matters. And so this is not going to go on forever, although it may feel like it right now. So hang in there and um, we, we see you, we feel you, and we appreciate what you're doing. And so you, you matter is the big thing that I want to communicate to these folks because they're ready to drop. <laughs> That's good. Victoria, what would you say? I just want to encourage everybody that it is a hard time, like Don was saying. And um, communication is key, not only with your church, but with your other team members and making sure that you're all on the same page. And I encourage you all to, um, in addition to everything else that you're doing, make sure that you're taking care of each other. And even on a technical level, understanding what role everybody is fulfilling and having those clear expectations for everyone so that you don't get to Sunday morning and um, there's a lot of confusion. But just know that you are all in our thoughts and prayers as we are all working through this right now. And we um, hope to be your champion and cheer you on as we all work through this. Dan, last word. We know that this too will pass eventually. We'll get back to normal. But the one advantage that you can use of this is seeing the power of media, the power of live streaming. Let's not forget that when we go back to normal. Let's develop new tools now to reach people and take that in once we get back into normal life. So let me say this in closing, that if you want to go deeper, if you would like to go deeper and really have a serious look at your live stream and your team and your workflow and what you're doing, send us an email, info at cookmediagroup.com, cook with an E, info at cookmediagroup.com. And uh, we'll talk to you about what it would take to uh, really have our team look at your live stream, uh, do an evaluation, get back with a phone call. If you really are serious about taking this to another level and you want to invest in that, we are thrilled to help you. We'd love to do it because we want to see more people reach. So just drop us an email, uh, info at cook mediagroup.com. We'll get back to you with some information about what it would take to make that happen, but uh, we'd love to help do that because we want to position you not just to get through this crisis, but to be a more solid digital church, be a church that's reaching out to people online all the time because we've seen such incredible growth opportunities out there. And last thing, check out my podcast, Phil, the Phil Cook podcast on iTunes and our YouTube channel. Uh, we're still pumping out podcasts. We're getting this information to you. Uh, helping you be a leader, a creative leader. That's that's where I want to really focus on, helping you lead creative teams of people into this whole thing and out of this to, to a whole new era. So check out the podcast, my blog at philcook.com. Check that out because I'm continuing to post on these kind of issues that'll help you. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. As I said, we're going to post this again. So I'd love for you to share it with people. If you know churches and, and organiz ministry organizations that are struggling with this, Please help us out, share it, get this information to people who need it the most. And we love you guys. We appreciate everything you've done. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you later.